Should any country or nation ever try to invade Alaska and put boots on ground, they will be very sorry that they did so. Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. Before I start, ladies and gentlemen, I want to say thank you very much to those of you that saw my video a couple of days ago. Now, I normally don't ask this during a video. I normally don't ask you to give the video a like. Uh, however, I'm going to talk about this really quick before I start because it does make a difference. Uh, a few videos ago, I think two or three videos ago, I asked you all to give that video a like because I felt it was extremely important that people get the word. And it was the video about C40 cities, and I'm going to leave the link to that video on the upper right-hand corner so that you can check it out. Very important video if you have not seen it yet. However, checking my analytics, I was like, wow, that really does work because I got an awful lot of likes on that video, and I do appreciate every one of you that took the one or two seconds it takes to click that like button because it looks like YouTube's algorithm picked it up. I never really knew if that works, you know, but it obviously does work. And during a time where a lot of YouTubers are actually being suppressed and being throttled back, it actually works to help the algorithm push your message out. So once again, thank you. And if you do find value, ladies and gentlemen, in what I do, please give the video a like so that more people can be introduced to the video and recommend it to them. This is one of the reasons why the Second Amendment is so important. And I don't understand, especially during a time that we're living in now, in the United States and around the world, but obviously I'm talking about the United States. I don't understand how it is that a government would want to take away your Second Amendment when things like this right here, Russia State TV revives efforts to reclaim Alaska from the United States. When there is a chance in our history, we have a very big chance in our history, in our generation, right, for, for us to enter into a world war. Why do governments want to take away your Second Amendment, your ability to protect yourself, not only yourself, but your family, your community, and your country as well, with the exception that they want to have full control over the population. Take away the guns, look at history, look at what happens once the guns are confiscated from a population. But anyways, let's talk about this for a little bit. I don't want you to worry if you're an Alaskan, but if you are an Alaskan that doesn't think that we ought to have the right to protect ourselves by having a firearm, by keeping the Second Amendment, and no, against an invading country, we would not be able to protect our state here in Alaska with handguns. We would actually need rifles, those rifles that are made for war even though that's not the rifles that you can buy in the free market. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so if you are against the Second Amendment, consider what would happen if Alaska was invaded. It's happened before. It happened during World War II, even though it was in the Aleutian Islands, I believe, that it happened. But we, as Alaskans, were actually able to thwart an invasion or an attack upon Alaska. I believe it was from the Japanese. So don't ever give up your right to be able to defend yourself because it's not just for yourself. It's for your state. It's for your country. Before I start reading this, I think that this is probably just a whole bunch of propaganda, but we'll have a little bit of fun and read it anyways. A panelist on a Russian state-run TV recently revived an effort for Moscow to reclaim Alaska from the United States of America. It's not going to happen. And if it does, then it means that there probably won't be very many Alaskans left standing. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's just the way it is. You know, Fairbanks, Alaska is the most heavily armed city in the United States per capita. And that is why, in my opinion, no country would dare try to put boots on ground on the United States of America. It's because I forgot how that quote goes, but some Japanese guy said that we can't invade the U.S. because there is a rifle behind every blade of grass or something like that. But that's why. Because there's absolutely no way that any standing army, any standing army, including our own, by the way, all right, because the Second Amendment is also there so that we can protect ourselves from governments if and when they become tyrannical, right? So there's no way that any standing army can hold down the United States. No way, ladies and gentlemen, because we are too heavily armed, and that is one of the blankets that provides us the freedom that we have today, the freedom that we still have. In 1867, the U.S. purchased Alaska from Russia for $7.2 million. That's a heck of a deal. The treaty with Russia was negotiated and signed by the Secretary of State, William Seward, and the Russian Minister to the United States. 
And here, according to the Washington Post, the Russian president was asked about Moscow reclaiming Alaska from the U.S. in 2014. And he re responded by asking, why do you need Alaska? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you right now why we need Alaska. First of all, because we purchased it from Russia, fair, fair and square, number one, and because I now consider myself an Alaskan. I wasn't born in Alaska, but I love this state, and this is where I'm going to die, in this state. How? I don't know. But if it's defending this state, then it is defending this state. And I'm sure that many more Alaskans feel the same way. Tensions between Russia and the U.S. have continued to escalate, and some Russian officials recently spoke about the possibility of reclaiming Alaska. Uh, that's fine. You can talk about it all you want. In July, Mr. Volodin, the chairman of the Russian State Duma, delivered a speech and spoke about Alaska, responding to U.S. sanctions against Moscow. Remember, sanctions don't work. Sanctions just are a pain in the ass to the people. Right? And those people that pass those sanctions, they never get to suffer the consequences of their own sanctions, ladies and gentlemen. It's just to people. Look at, look at what a mess our world has become. Look at what a mess our world has become just because we can't be peaceful and trade with each other. What is so hard about a country running its own country with its own natural resources and then whatever extra they have after they've provided themselves with what they need to live, they can trade outside their borders. What is so hard about that? What is so bad about that? Why do we have to have a global economy? Why can't we make our own food? grow our own food, raise our own food? Why can't we drill for our own fuel? Why can't we make our own solar panels? For goodness gracious, I love the Ops solar generators. I love them. But about 99% of solar generators are made in China. Why? Because we don't make them here in the U.S. And the ones that are made in the U.S., in my opinion, are way too expensive. And most people just won't buy them. It's not because you don't want to, but when you have a choice, when, when you have a choice between buying a pair of boots that wasn't made in the U.S. and buying a pair of boots that was made in the U.S. and the quality are pretty much the same, but the ones that weren't made in the U.S. are one third the price. And the reason I'm picking on boots here is because I had that same experience. Let me tell you a story because this happened several years back. I went to a local store here to buy a pair of work boots that had st uh, steel toe. Well, not steel toe, but composite toe. In Alaska here, we don't really wear steel toe, especially during the winter, because the steel gets too cold. So a composite toe is just as good, pretty much, and it doesn't get so cold where it will freeze your toes. But I went into a store to buy a pair of boots, and I told the girl that was assisting me, I said, can you show me uh, three pairs of boots, because they only have three that were made in the U.S., that are made in the U.S., and that are good work boots that'll last me a long time. She brought out every pair that was made in the US. I tried them all on and none of them felt good. And they were all very expensive in the 300 to $400 range. Now I feel that if you're gonna buy a $400 pair of boots, that you shouldn't have to break them in. That they should be pretty comfortable when you put them on. You shouldn't put them on and be like, ah, oh, they're not that comfortable, but hopefully they'll break in. No, they should be good to go. And this was several years ago right so she brings me out a fourth pair i didn't know that this fourth pair was not made in in the united states but she brings me out this fourth pair i try it on it was perfect it fit perfect it felt perfect and it was good quality leather right and she says the only and it cost about one third the price of what the other boots cost that one only cost about 140 dollars i think at that time now it's a lot more expensive but uh, she said, there's only one problem with that because I put them on, I tied them up, I went up and down the stairs, you know, I felt, and they were perfect. She said, there's only one problem. And I'm like, what's that? I'm like, they're not made in the United States. And I was like, these aren't made in the U.S.? They're made in China, ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately. I bought them because I needed a good pair of boots that I could be standing up for hours building my house. This was while I was building my house. So I got them. So once the United States gets to building stuff again that's good quality and that people can afford, people will stop buying stuff from other countries. That's just how the market works. 
I know I got off subject there for a little bit, but let's go ahead and finish this up. In July, Mr. Volod and the chair of the Russian State Duma delivered a speech and spoke about Alaska responding to U.S. sanctions against Moscow. When they, U.S. lawmakers, attempt to appropriate our assets abroad, so what I think he's talking about here is all of the uh, $380 billion or so that the U.S. confiscated from Russian banks and the central bank. And in my opinion, that was wrong. It's their money, right? And now look at what's happening with all of these other countries saying, whoa, wait a minute. You mean that the U.S. can just confiscate our money if we do something that they don't want us to do? Now what's happening is called BRICS plus nations. They're joining together to bypass the U.S. dollar because they're afraid that the U.S. will bully them into a situation that they don't want to get themselves into. And it also appears that in Russia, uh, the Siberian news agency NGS24 reported that several billboards appeared in the city of, however that's pronounced, saying that Alaska is ours. Now, in a tweet responding to the comments made by Volodin, Alaska Governor Mike Dunleavy said to the Russian politicians who believe they can take back Alaska, good luck. And I have to agree with that. Good luck. The war, ladies and gentlemen, is not between the Russian people and the American people. The war is between the American government and the Russian government. And you know what I mean. I know that supposedly we don't have any boots on ground over in the big EU and Eastern Europe, right? But the war is not between us. So if any Russians watch this video, the war is not between our Russian brothers and sisters. It's between the governments. When governments fail, when politicians fail at their jobs, they take you to war. All of the consequences that are negative consequences of almost anything that occurs, geopolitically speaking, that is, is a failure of politicians. And we the people pay the price. But I can say this as a matter of fact. I would say, well, maybe it's not a matter of fact because I haven't polled every Alaskan in Alaska. Should any country or nation ever try to invade Alaska and put boots on ground, they will be very sorry that they did so. Because I don't think I've talked to one Alaskan that wouldn't stand up when the wolf comes to the door. We will fight to the very last man or woman or child because we love this state. It's why we're here. It's why we put up with some of the hardships that we put up with living here because we love living here. So ladies and gentlemen, don't worry about Alaska. Don't worry about us over here. We're going to be all right. And this, in my opinion, is just propaganda. Now, the reason that I did this video is because I've received a whole bunch of emails about this specific article right here. So I'll go ahead and leave it linked on a comment that I pin up under the description of the video so that you can revisit it if you like. Other than that, I hope that you have a great rest of your day. God bless every one of you. God bless America. I'm Alaska Prepper. I'm out.